A very good evening, Dallas, Dallas, Dallas. क्या हाल है क्या हाल है क्या हाल है मैं हूँ आपका दोस्त आपका साथी डी जे मोदी ऑन फनेश रेडियो ऑन अ लीडर्स जर्नी अ जर्नी वेर वी ब्रिंग यू लीडर्स फ्रॉम द कम्युनिटी सी आई ओज सी ई ओज आर मेयर आर लीडर्स आर एक्टर्स आर सिंगर्स एंड टूडे वी हैव समी वेरी यूनिक अ डॉक्टर एन ओ बी जी वाई एन स्पेशलिस्ट हु इज गोइंग टॉक टू अस दिस इवनिंग डॉक्टर माधुरी गुरीपति Dr. Madhuri Gurupati is a board-certified obstetrician gynecologist from the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and has been in practice for the past 17 years. She obtained her undergraduate medical degree from Andhra Medical College in South India. She moved to the U.S. to pursue her residency training first at Henry Ford Hospital and later at Providence St. John's Hospital in Michigan, where she continued on as a staff physician. She relocated to Plano, Texas in 2010 and worked at the Medical Center of Plano, currently Medical City Plano. She's affiliated with the Medical City Plano and Baylor Hospital in Frisco. During her residency, Dr. Gudipati was recognized with the Bernard Mandelbaum Award for her research in preterm pre labor. She continues to have a special interest in high-risk pregnancies. Her patient care philosophy is helping women lead healthy lives through proper guidance. education and communication beautiful so impressive thank you so much for that introduction mona now oh, mr madhuri gudapati dr madhuri gudapati welcome to fanisha radio thank you so much mr moody it's a pleasure and thank you mona and uh, mr mr i'm so used to all the misters <laughs> here dr madhuri um, dr madhuri i'll start with asking you that the format of the show is we have so many young listeners of fanisha radio who want to thrive to become somebody in this in their lives in their journey and especially we being immigrants we have so many ambitions we want to go accomplish we'll start what was your background uh, what was your background sure um and yes uh, it's definitely a wonderful place to be thrive and flourish so i um i was born in the uk and uh, uh we moved to india uh with with my family my parents and my sister when i was about 5 and 1/2 years old um we are from south india from andhra pradesh uh, i grew up in um a city called vishakhapatnam vizag go vizag uh, a beautiful coastal city uh, that's where i did my schooling my uh, medical college and then um i moved to the states um we were in uh, michigan uh, that's where i did my uh, residency training I did internal medicine and then moved to OBGYN. And while I was actually in um, my residency training, I was um asked to uh stay on as a staff physician. So I took up a a teaching uh faculty position there for a couple of years. And I got a similar role, similar position here um at the Medical Center of Plano, now Medical City Plano. So we moved from Michigan to Dallas. Um I've been in Plano uh since then. Uh so currently um I practice in Plano. I uh go to and deliver babies at the Med City Plano and uh Baylor Scott and White Hospital in Frisco. Wow. So multiple places you visit and uh, welcome to Plano. I've been here for last 30 years i love this uh, plano and uh, dfw area so right. this is a very silly question to ask a doctor because as south asians we all know when we start uh, you know we are, when we are babies our parents already give us a name of engineer or doctor but why did you become a doctor right no no question is silly and um you know i um i realized very early um and i was drawn to this profession due to the fact that it it allows you to care for people get involved in their lives treat them um enjoy with them celebrate with them cry with them and this i saw first hand through my father's experiences my father is an ophthalmologist and eye specialist i practically grew up in his clinic and through his interactions for him of course he um worked with the disorders of the eye and um gave the gift of vision and i was certainly determined to do something very similar to be involved with 
people care, the health, uh, and to make a difference in, in their lives, uh, and to make a mark. And of course, as I grew up, as I participated in um, health camps, vaccination programs, interacted with people, I think that desire became more and more stronger to make a difference. Oh, wow. Uh, so I'll ask you, a lot of young kids, like you already had a dad who was a doctor and you're in there. If they are not academically so drawn towards books and, and they want to become a doctor, any advice for them or, you know, if they want to take that career path, but they are not so much good grade students? Sure. Um, yes. Whatever you are aspiring to, to be, I think there needs to be a purpose, a real purpose behind what your passion is. You know, I ask youngsters, what sparks your interest? What, what do you love to do, whether you're in school or outside of school, besides TV and video games? Technology. Right. Yeah. Um, and grades are one thing. Yes, you have to be sincere. You have to be hardworking. But if you have a true passion, I think all of that will certainly fall in place in due course, in due time. You will figure out ways of getting to that, you know. So dream big. Don't let anybody put you down or say, you know, the grades is all that matters. You will develop that passion, develop that interest if you have a sincere uh, true reason behind it. Purpose. Yeah. Wow, what a leadership lesson here. So you mentioned you did your internal medicine and you decided to become an OBGYN. Why? Yes. Well, there are a few reasons, Mr. Moody. Um, first, OBGYN is such a unique uh, specialty. It, it allows me to be a clinician. I, I care for patients, for women in my clinic. And sprinkled in there, there's a little bit of pediatrics, a little bit of family practice, a little bit of internal medicine, dermatology, allergy. I'm you know, looking at all of these things as I care for my women and um, taking care of, of women in all their ages from, from teen years to adulthood to later on. Um, it is such a gratifying experience and to be there in the most wonderful, exciting part of their life, pregnancy and having a child. Um, second, I'm a surgeon, you know, it allows me to work at the hospital to do surgeries in the operating theater and that requires precision it requires skill and that mind body co coordination so that I think is very special very unique uh, it, it adds spice to what I do um, thirdly um, if you think about it n and no other specialty offers this we take care of two lives in OBGYN you're taking care of the mother, you're taking care of the baby in her. Treat them differently, but in combination. And this, you know, just gives me such an all-rounded uh, approach. Uh, and I truly feel privileged to serve women, to, to be an OBGYN, and I'm honored. Wow. And, and uh, not only you're treating the two, but their families as well. And if you think they're about so it, involved. right, if you think about it, twins. There's three lives. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. It's uh, fantastic. What has been your most challenging experience? Oh, there have been many. Um, I mean, I, by the nature of my profession, doing what I do regularly, I believe every day is a challenge, every moment. There is never a dull moment. Um, you know, because if you think about it, what you think as routine, normal bread and butter can suddenly change into something exactly opposite in the blink of an eye within moments within seconds so you always have to be vigilant always have to be alert uh, on your toes um, because the task ahead of you is two lives you're, you're taking care of um, these patients that depend on you so making those decisions um, within that time frame is very very critical and like I said, I have a special focus on high-risk pregnancies. I take care of women um, who have had uh, pre-existing medical conditions, be it diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, mental illness, or those who have had a previous pregnancy with complications who come to me for this current pregnancy to take care of. And I tell you, 
I have learned immensely from these experiences. Every single day, every single moment, you know, is a teaching lesson for me. And all of these are small hurdles that uh, you, you cross. Um, so I take it up as a challenge because every moment is a challenge. And how do you take that outside the office? Sometimes, sometimes emotions, if, if things get complicated and you know you have done everything you could and there's no, not much that can happen, how do you take that home or how do you deal with it? Oh yeah, um, it, it you know you 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 do your best. You put in your best foot. You do your best. You um, use all your technology, all your diagnostic techniques, all your treatment plans, all your surgical techniques to do your best. Take care of your patient the best. But there are definitely times like that, as you mentioned, um, and you tell yourself you have given it your best, and um, keep continue to do that. Because you are, you, we think we are in control, but we are not always uh, in control. There's someone else up there controlling. Um, I believe giving it your most sincere effort is all that matters. Wow. wow. Right. Another leadership lesson, Dallas. Give your 101% and leave the rest to the Almighty. Once again, Dallas, we are talking to Dr. Madhuri Gudipati on Financial Radio on a leader's journey. This is DJ Moody, produced by Vishali Thakkar. How was COVID? How did it impact you, the work, the whole nine yards? Yeah, COVID is still ongoing and COVID has affected uh, everybody, big and small, around the world. Um, you know, so it has definitely impacted us, my practice, our hospital. Um, so PPE um, became very important, a part and parcel of our daily activities. And PPE is the personal protective equipment, oh. the you know the the gear that you wear, uh, from the mask to the oh the God. gown, everything. Um, in addition, you know, to to the regular that you uh, that normally do. That is not in, yes, an no, easy thing no. to do every day. No, especially uh, during delivery in a labor room or during surgery, because it's very important. Self-protection here becomes important too. Uh, you have to, you know, make sure that you are uh, protected properly with all the protocols before you go ahead and take care of someone else. Um, mask use, um, and in fact, in the peak of uh, if of COVID um, last year and earlier this year, we would only allow uh, the woman, um, the patient, and or one person in, both to the uh, office and the hospital. Uh, visitation rules were very restricted, very limited, and it's very difficult. You know, during delivery, we've all been through this, um, and having a child, um, the, uh, the the questionnaires, checking temperatures, uh, quarantine, social distancing, all of this had become very, very important. Uh, and telemedicine, <coughs> who were to know, a gynecologist would uh, uh, sit in front of a computer, but I have done a fair share of uh, consultations. Um, remotely uh, so that uh, has definitely helped and things are definitely getting better the thanks to the vaccine and um, I would highly highly recommend and advise the COVID vaccine and uh, Dr. Madhuri did you have more deliveries because of COVID or were had that changed <laughs> good question <laughs> I did. The baby business did not stop in a way. Did um, it increase? Uh, yes and no. Some okay. months we were busy. I think initially I did see a lot of fear in women uh, about what was going on, about this new um, uh, demon. Uh, we, we really did not know. Even the medical faculty did not know what this was, how dangerous this was, and how widespread to be a pandemic and for us to still walk around in masks. Um, there was fear. There was fear of planning for a pregnancy, coming out and going to the doctor. Even today I hear women say, Doc, we haven't been out or seen a, a physician or my primary care doctor since last year because we are still scared or because we just got our vaccine. And even to think about or plan for a baby was, um, was scary, was concerning. Um, they would put it off. But I think people are now more comfortable. We are um, slightly in a better place to deal with this uh, scenario. Who, who was uh, or who is your inspiration? Um, so like for all of us, like it's true for all of us, um, my parents um, are definitely my first inspiration. Um, like I said, my father, 
an ophthalmologist. Um, he is my first guru. Um, and my mother as a high school teacher, she still motivates me today uh, with her self-discipline and uh, her teachings. Um, and as I went on in my journey, uh, schooling, college, medical schooling and residency, I've had many, many teachers, um, teachers, professors, uh, doctors, who have stood as you know great great inspiration for me, uh, especially in residency training because, be it day, be it night, my mentors, my doctors were there spending hours on end, you know, teaching us the nuances of medicine because that's the time for you to learn, uh, and the technique of surgery, the skill of surgery, um, because the uniqueness of medicine is there is so many right ways of doing, solving a problem. Or, or treating a patient, or medication, or surgery. So I owe it all to them. I am, my heart is filled with gratitude. And the women I see every day, my, gen, my regular practice on a day-to-day -day basis, every single moment, in fact, it's like a journey for me. I sit and I get involved in everybody's small journey. Everyone has a story to tell, if you listen to them. And so inspirational, so motivational, how they have um, gotten over their hurdles. And uh, I have learned so much as, as an inspiration from my patients, my women, uh, my extended family. We, have, we make um, memories and lifetime relationships. Wow. Your biggest fear? My, my biggest fear. My biggest fear is the fear of the unknown. Um, because... By virtue of what we do in medicine, um, again, things can, things can change in the blink of an eye. And through diagnostic tests or blood tests, if, say, I suddenly find out about something which is serious or dangerous, life-threatening for either the mother, the woman, or lethal for the baby, that is a very hard, fearful situation, you know, and or Another circumstance could be if I suddenly find out or uh, a test uncovers something that I didn't even know about, the patient did not reveal to me. Um, so I really urge your listeners and everyone to go out there and give the doctor the entire information because that is how we best treat you. And any advice for the uh, ladies who are going to get pregnant or you know, planting a baby, anything, any few lines for them? Sure, um, you know, health, personal health is very important. Diet, important. Exercise, regular exercise, this is important. Under the circumstances right now prevailing with the pandemic, I would say go get your vaccine, get vaccinated. You know, prevention is better than cure. So, you know, getting a checkup done, making sure everything is going well is uh, probably important. And with so much you do every day, again, with your work and surgeries and families and babies how do you maintain the work-life balance right very important um you know so i don't really separate work from home to me taking care of my family my kids is the same as taking care of my patients their babies my staff in my office um, patients in the hospital and, you know, I try to be organized. Um, I have, uh, um, you know, task projects that, you know, I put in place daily, monthly, um, weekly. And those change, you know, you prioritize as new things come along. Um, I, I walk around with a notebook and, of course, the phone has taken over. But being organized, you know, is definitely helpful. Um, so. Another very good at leadership, very small thing, but getting organized. Do you plan for years, like one, two, three year plans? I try to. Okay. Yes, good. but right now it's uh, daily, weekly, monthly goals. Um, those plans are definitely there. You know, you, you, have to, you, you have to make your plans and goals and work towards them because that's what keeps you going. I touched on this before. How do you deal with stress? Right. All I hear about is stress these days, especially in what we're going through right now, day in and, and day out. And on that yeah. note, do you think our South Asian community in general are stressed? I'm, I'm just not trying to put in one box, mm -hmm. but overall, okay, let's make it broader. Are people in general stressed? Yes, 
Absolutely. Do you know why? Well, I we mean, have I we have a lot, right? right. I mean, yeah. mostly. Yeah, we have a lot on our plate. We are all from kids to adults to everybody, big and small. I think, well, the situation we are in right now with with COVID, with the pandemic, has been very stressful. Everybody's been affected. You know, their routine has changed. Their day-to-day -day activities. Uh, who would you know that you would be schooling from home in front of a computer, in front of a screen all day long? Uh, that is stressful. Um, you know, the the parents that take care of them at home. The definition of work from home has changed. Previously, you know, the kids used to go to school and they were working from home. That's a different scenario. But having the kids at home, having to take care of them while they are at school at home, plus doing their own work, that is another source of stress. So, um, yes, we are all stressed, but th life is a stress, you know. Uh, we still have to go on and keep kicking. Um, I, I practice yoga. I do yoga. I preach this to my women. I, I really think it helps. It makes a difference um, with my day-to-day -day daily routine. Um, my family is, is my uh, biggest stress buster. Um, my, my wonderful husband who has been there, a huge support to me, my kids. So taking out time, spending time with them as much as I can uh, is a stress reliever uh, to unwind. Um, taking, you know, small breaks, small trips, um, meeting with friends, vacations, even if it's short, that helps to re-energize. Um, we recently bought a, uh, got a puppy. Oh, wow. So <laughs> taking the dog for a walk has been a, you know, a stress buster. So. Oh. We have f few more minutes. Uh, any funny stories? Once again, Dallas, Dr. Mar Madhuri Gudipati at the studios of Funny Show on a Leader's Journey, produced by Vishali Tucker. I'm DJ Moody. Uh, any funny stories? <laughs> delivering babies. <laughs> fun. We have fun every day. Um, I get some very interesting questions um, from my patients. Uh, doctor, can I can I eat chocolate? Can I eat dark chocolate? <laughs> oh, yeah. If if I can eat dark cho chocolate, how much would you recommend I eat? <laughs> you know, um, interesting questions. And from the from the husband. So is the answer uh, yes yeah. or no? <laughs> <laughs> I will leave it at that. Um, ca can I take my wife on a drive or c can we go on a bumpy road? Is, is it okay? Is it safe to go on a bumpy road? Um, can I take her to the movies or a, mo or a music concert? They should you know? talk to our parents. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Or more recent, most recently, can, can she wear the Apple Watch? You know, is, is there so, you know, fun times. With, with the changing times, ma the questions change. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. What is your message to the youth? The youngsters, yeah. Um, I'm reminded of a conversation I had with my son. Um, he, he took up computer science in college. And he's always been interested in math. He's, he's a math geek. He loves working with complicated equations and he talks in math. So I'd asked him, you know, why computer science, you know, with your math interest? And he basically told me I would want to use my computer education to to apply math to apply these equations in fields like robotics so my message is you again going back to my initial statement you have to have a valid purpose um, wh why do I want to take up what I want to take up if you want to be a doctor absolutely this is a great profession but be sincere um, there's a lot of hard work involved um, be truthful and and believe in yourself believe in yourself don't let you know anyone stray you away from that um, and dream big Wow some amazing wisdom uh, Dr. Madhuri Gurabadi amazing wisdom for the listeners of Funisha Radio so before we adjourn this evening any last words for the listeners or anybody sure absolutely first of all thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity Mr. Moody Mona uh, and uh, the organizer Vaishali Tucker, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank the listeners and all the women out there. It is a privilege. I am humbled to be part of this community to serve here. Thank you so much. And I just want to thank you once again. Raj from Spice Rack is listening and he's enjoying the conversation. Raj, I'm going to hear some surprise news from you maybe. No. Okay. So once again, Dr. Madhuri Guttapati, it was amazing talking to you. Great leadership lessons to the youth. Have a great evening. Thank you so much.